Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session of lesson 2 Socialism in Europe and the Russian Revolution. Today we will study about Stalinism and collectivization and the legacy of the Russian Revolution. Stalinism and collectivization. The period of the early planned economy was linked to the disaster of the collectivization of agriculture. By 1927 to 1928, the towns in Soviet Russia were facing an acute problem of grain supplies. The government fixed prices at which grain must be sold. But the peasants refused to sell their grains to government buyers at these prices. Stalin, who headed the party after the death of Lenin, introduced firm emergency measures. He believed that rich peasants and traders in the countrysides were holding stocks in the hope of higher prices. Speculation had to be stopped and supplies confiscated. In 1928, party members toured the grain producing areas, surprising enforced grain collections and raiding Kulak, the name for well-to-do peasants. As shortage continued, the decision was taken to collectivize farms. It was argued that grains shortage were partly due to the small size of holdings. After 1917s, land had been given over to peasants. These small size peasants farm could not be modernized. To develop modern farms and run them along industrial lines with machinery, it was necessary to eliminate kulaks, take away land from peasants and establish state-controlled large farms. After that, Stalin's collectivization program was followed. From 1929, the party forced all peasants to cultivate in collective farms, that is, kolkhoz. The bulk of land and implements were transferred to the ownership of collective farms. Peasant work on the land and the coal cause profit was shared. Enraged peasant resisted the authorities and destroyed their livestock. Between 1929 and 1931, the number of cattle fell by one third. Those who resisted collectivization were severely punished. Many were deported and exiled. As they resisted collectivization, peasants argued that they were not rich and they were not against socialism. They merely did not want to work in collective farms for a variety of reasons. Stalin's government allowed some independent collections but treated such cultivators unsympathetically. In spite of collectivization, production did not increase immediately. In fact, the bad harvest of 1930 to 1933 led to a ton of most devastating famine in Soviet history when over 4 million people died. There were many people within the party who criticized the confusion in industrial production under the planned economy and the consequences of collectivization. Stalin and his sympathizer charged these critics with conspiracy against socialism. Accusations were made throughout the country and by 1939, over 2 million were in prison or labor camps. Most were innocent of the crimes, but no one spoke for them. A large number were forced to make false confession under torture and were executed. Several among them were talented professionals. Now we will study about the legacy of the Russian Revolution. Existing socialist parties in Europe did not wholly approve of the way of Bolshevik took power and kept it. However, the possibility of a worker state fired people's imagination across the world. In many countries, communist parties were formed, like the Communist Party of the Great Britain. The Bolshevik encouraged colonial people to follow their experiment. Many non-Russian from outside the USSR participated in the Conference of the People of the East in 1920 and the Bolshevik founded Comintern, an international union 
of pro bolshevik socialist parties some received education in the ussrs communist university of the workers of the east by the time of the outbreak of the second world war the ussr had given socialism a global face and world stature yet by the 1950s it was acknowledged within the country that the style of government in the ussr was not in keeping with the ideals of the russian revolution in the world socialist movement too it was recognized that all was not well in the soviet union a backward country has become a great power its industries and agriculture had developed and the poor were being fed but it had denied the essential freedom to its citizens and carried out its developmental projects through repressive policies by the end of 20th century the international reputation of ussr as a socialist country had declined though it was recognized that socialist ideals still enjoy respect among its people but in each country the ideas of socialism were rethought in a variety of different ways students here we are end of this chapter i hope this video was helpful for you thanks for watching